next week when investigative journalist Reed Hardigan will present his latest documentary effort about a man named Tim. <laughs> Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I'd like to introduce you to Tim. Tim and I first spoke last summer after an article I'd written about violence and humanity appeared in a national publication. Tim contacted me by phone and we spoke at length about a variety of topics. I found him to be engaging, quick and humorous. Before I knew it, an hour had passed and I felt I'd made a friend for life. When Tim first told me he was a contract killer, I was both shocked and amazed. The hook was set. I had to find out everything I could about it. It starts early. His guidance counselor, Philip Kiriakou. Oh, you could tell there was something odd about him right away. Uh, the other kids sensed it too. Uh, but back then there was very little we could do about it. Just hope we could get him right through the system without him scaring the other kids too much, or for the teachers, for that matter. He was smart, though. By the time he was in high school, his high academic standing and multiple assault charges earned him both the fear and respect of the faculty and student body alike. When I tried to uh, place him, if I made a suggestion to him that he didn't like, uh, his response would take on a threatening edge. And it was scary because I never knew whether he meant it or not. It was during this time Tim first started thinking about a career. I, I was able to track no, down one of his do few the, friends who agreed to speak okay? with me. No, send it to me. You know what? I've got Peter McCallum. I'm going to be you back and I want that information. Would you please state your name for the record? You crazy? I'm not telling you my name. How do you know Tim? My family had a hunting lodge up north. Tim would come by fairly often. We'd go hunting. He was a good shot. He was great with weapons. We were always a little nervous anytime he had a gun in his hands. How did he become a contract killer? I don't know. He told his parents he was going overseas to become a lawyer or something. Comes back and tells me that his place in the world has changed somehow. Killing? Is that what he was doing overseas? Killing? I don't know. I never talked to the guy. And when he came back? I never talked to him then either. I don't consort with killers. You must have talked to him once or twice, here or there, since he's been back. No, I've told you everything I know about the guy. And to be honest, I'm a busy man, and you're wasting my time. I would really appreciate if you left right now. Time came that Tim agreed to meet with me, but only in a public place. I was a little apprehensive, but nervous and excited. We went for a walk in a park, and I found him to be every bit as charming as he was during that first phone call. Reed, Reed Hardigan, we spoke on the phone. I wanted to ask Tim about his enjoyment of killing for some time, and thought this could be the time to do it. But I wanted to broach the subject carefully. So, Tim, how long have you been killing? <laughs> hmm. I've always killed, as long as I can remember. If I lived? Chances are I had an interest in killing it. No, I mean, you know, your first real kill. My first human kill. This is kind of embarrassing. All right, I was at a girl's house one day. And uh, while we were having breakfast, her jugular vein somehow became severed. Somehow became severed? Yeah, you know, like, with a knife. Sliced open, blood shooting everywhere. So I, I mean, I put my hand around her neck. I wouldn't stop bleeding. 
So I put my other hand around her neck and I squeeze tight and the blood stopped squirting. She started choking and uh, no longer stopped breathing altogether. I mean, I try and do the right thing and she ends up dying on me. You won't tell anyone, will you? So that was your first. Tell me, how did it feel? It was a long time ago. <sighs> All right. I... I remember my hands around her neck and squeezing tight. And I was watching the life drain from her eyes. I remember thinking, I like this. What's life like as a contract killer? Now, oh, you know, it's a lot of fun sometimes. I get to go to exciting and exotic places. I meet interesting and powerful people. And then I get to kill them. What about guilt? <laughs> yeah, rarely. Hey, we're all gonna die. Some just deserve to go sooner than others. So do you have some kind of code of who you will and won't kill? Nah. I stay out of the politics. It keeps away from being focused. So, I mean, I've got a few good more years left in me. Why waste it by getting involved? Ever get someone I'd know? You're kidding me. There is no way I would tell you. Man, I sign confidentiality agreements, contracts of all kinds. This is a big production. You have no idea. A lot of people depend on me. And my name means nothing. If I can't keep my mouth shut. After that, Tim and I grew closer. We'd regular conversations, and eventually he even trusted me with his phone number. One day, I called him out of the blue. Hello? Hey, Tim, it's Reed. How are you? Reed, it's great to hear from you. Tim, is everything okay on your end? Oh, yeah. Yeah, you know, I'm living the dream, but I am kind of in the middle of yeah, it's nothing important. Call me when you can. Okay, great. I'll talk to you soon. Hey, hey, <laughs> sweetheart, you're only going to make it worse. I had heard Tim really loved someone once, and I asked him about it on another occasion that we met. Hmm. That's all I have to say about that. Gentlemen, dinner has arrived. Ah. Wish for you there, Tim. That's great, thank you. <laughs> and a steak cooked meeting room. Lovely, thank you. Enjoy your meal, gentlemen. Thanks. Cheers. So I hear you've been asking questions about me. And Peter McCallum isn't too happy with you. He's afraid you're gonna let his name slip out. Should I be worried? Nah, 
I'll just move his name up on the list. <laughs> <laughs> Is there anyone you wouldn't kill? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Did you ever want to settle down? Have a family? There was someone. A few years ago. Hmm. God, I love to laugh with her. She told me a lot. I mean, she was beautiful. She made me push myself. I mean, a remarkable woman. I miss her. Why didn't it work out? It's complicated. I mean, it just didn't. So you haven't seen or talked to her for a while? No, not for some time now. Do you know where she is? Most of her is at the bottom of the lake about a mile out. How's the fish? <laughs> it's good. <laughs> After that, I didn't speak to him for a while. I didn't know if he was avoiding me or just busy. I poured over all the pieces of Tim's life that I'd managed to collect. More and more, I felt drawn to his story. A story I thought should be told. Finally, I got through to him. Hey, Tim, it's Reed. How's it going? Reed! <laughs> it's Reed. What's going on? I'll call you back. No, no, no. It's all right. I got a minute. What's on your mind? Well, I was hoping to do a documentary. I was hoping to do a documentary on you. Is that okay? Let me sit down in my hand. What were you saying? I want to make a documentary about you. Documentary about me? I don't know what but yeah, cool. What do you want from me? Nothing right now. Jesus, Tim, call me back when you can. Hey, man, I'll call you right back. This thing is doing that badly. Tim hung up, and once again, I haven't heard from him or been able to contact him. Is he dead? Is he alive? I don't know. How does a smart, witty, and by all appearances friendly individual turn into a cold-blooded professional killer. I don't know. Something biological? Sociological? Is it Tim's fault? Or the society that nurtured him? Reed promises that this will be a show you will not want to miss with one of the most fascinating subjects we have ever had. And now, our first guest to the show. Thank you. 